Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacey, and you're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Our guest is Tino Diaz, Managing Director of America's Homeowner Alliance. Welcome to the show, Tino. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. So as Bob mentioned, Tino is Managing Director of America's Homeowner Alliance, a national alliance representing the interests of existing and aspiring homeowners with a mission to protect and promote sustainable home ownership for all segments of America. First, Tino, tell us all about America's Homeowner Alliance. What does the organization do? We watch out for the homeowner, not only the existing homeowner, which has some interest in their current home. They think everything is over once you're bought, right? Mm -hmm. But also the prospective owners, folks that, that are looking forward to owning a home sometime in the future. And what we do is we are like bird dogs, as well as watchdogs, as well as uh, hound dogs, for watching the interests of those folks. And we make sure that legislation that is being proposed, as well as that which is being changed, is for the benefit of the homeowner. In addition to having a terrific benefits package for people, that they can get all kinds of uh, goodies and receive cash back on, on, their, uh, on their purchases and such. Hmm, interesting. So are you a lobbying arm? Yes, we will, we will actually, I wouldn't say we lobby, but mm-hmm. I would say that we go and talk to our regulators and legislators mm-hmm. on behalf of the homeowners of America. Uh, people think of that as, as lobbying, but we've got to have a voice for homeowners. There it has not been a voice for homeowners in America mm-hmm. before this institution. We had to create it because so many of us are being uh, damaged by the policies and, and uh, you know, procedures that are being put in place. And home ownership is decreasing as a result of those things that have been put in place over the last 10 years. Huh. It's interesting because anytime I have, so I have 450 real estate agents at my company and every once in a while agents say to me, why do I have to be a realtor? So we require our agents to be realtors and there are lots of benefits to the realtor organization. But one of the greatest benefits I tell them is that they're out protecting our jobs because constantly there's legislation being or people are trying to pass through, which eliminates like the mortgage interest tax deduction or that there's no capital gains on uh, selling a property, et cetera. So first, yes. my, my question. Guess what? Yes. When, when, when you have the voice of the actual homeowners, yes. which is the power behind it, these are the, the folks that vote. Yes. When you go and talk to Congress and say, listen, these are your constituents that right. are worried about this thing, their ears perk up right away and listen. Yes. Because it's one thing to be the business guys that are going there to, to talk to them. Another thing is that you have the actual folks that will vote for them yes. to say, this is how we're being affected. And that's very powerful. Yes. I've learned so much by just sitting on the board of the realtor organization at times and um and doing like they have realtor day on Beacon Hill. And it's so interesting just because I do not have any type of political background, but seeing how like they'll try to pass legislation on a totally separate matter. And then groups will add in wording that would in effect eliminate like a mortgage interest tax deduction. So that's why it takes so long for legislation to pass because it's not just yes. about one issue. They try to cram in 50 different issues on unrelated topics, so now you have lobbyists trying to stop particular legislation from going through. We're right along those lines, Stacey. Yes. We uh, bought off a, a proposed legislation that was looking for 7.5 basis points to every mortgage originated in America mm. to pay for the Gulf oil cleanup. Crazy. Yeah, it's not what they tried to do. That did not pass because we fought it. We not it, what we did is we we joined with the other groups. We brought them in, mm-hmm. made made the made them aware of it, and so the mortgage bankers, the realtors, all the other great groups, as well as the other consumer groups, we voiced our concerns about it and stopped that legislation. Otherwise, we would have been stuck Absolutely. with an additional, let's say, seventy to eighty dollars a month for every new homeowner coming on America for about ten years just to clean up the Gulf. Right. Yeah, it's not fair. So the so you have your coalition or alliance is for homeowners. I'm in the real estate business. Bob is in the mortgage business. So our interests are all very much aligned. Is your yes. organization appropriate for all real estate professionals, mortgage people, appraisers, etc., or is it simply just homeowners? 
yes, it's appropriate for the homeowners and it's appropriate for the people in the business because they make a living out of helping folks get into a home. How could you not be interested right. in being on the side of protecting home ownership? Okay. Is there an annual fee for membership? Yes, there is, and it's $20. But for listeners of your show, I've got a special for you. Awesome. And that is if they enter the code AHA, which stands for America's Homeowner Alliance, right? Mm -hmm. AHA 2017. That's AHA 2017. Mm -hmm. When they go to our website to join, they'll get one year free membership to try it out. There's no credit card required. This is not a gimmick or anything Mm -hmm. at all. I want them to go in there. I want them to see the research that's available, to see the, the way we fight off those legislations, to see the way that we bring them up to date on what's happening in America, as well as tips and all kinds of need things or cooking all things related for, for home, homeowners, right? Wow. But if they go there and they enter that code, they'll get one 12 months, 12 months of membership for free. And then if they like it, then they can pay their $20 and remain a homeowner and add their voice to all the rest of us that are trying to protect home ownership for not only the people who are here now, but for those that are coming. Right. And, and it sounds like how can you not save $20 just by being a member? So right. no matter what, yes. it sounds like it's basically free um yes if you use if you go into there and you use the discount program which is we're teamed up with ebates you'll get Mm -hmm. rebates on all your purchases i'm telling you at this moment i'm up to past 500 dollars with the rebates i've more than paid for my membership right you know like for 100 years right yes (laughs) but it's a great benefit but more importantly the voice of the homeowner is being heard so that new legislation or things that are coming on protect us Right. And that we can stay in our homes. So I have a question for you, Tino. Uh, you know, talking yeah. about protecting people, one of the issues that we're running into in pretty much all areas of Massachusetts, well, the eastern parts of it, uh, is a lack of inventory. And unlike other states, we don't really have a lot of land to build on unless you go way out in the western part of the state. Uh, right. Do you know of anybody that's working to get communities to be a little more realistic with um, their building codes or their building variances so pe- builders can actually start putting up houses again? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It, You know, the home builders estimate that on a median home in America, it costs $84,000 of regulatory cost mm-hmm. to build a home. That's $50,000 before you break ground and $34,000 after you break ground. Imagine that cost to be added on to the, to the acquiring land to getting the building materials, and then the scarce uh, labor that's out there to build these things. You can't build an affordable home in America. It's extremely expensive right now. Much of that has to do with a lot of the regulatory costs that are involved in this thing. So there's all kinds of efforts all over America that are trying to find different ways to, to bring this down. But one of the key ways is we've got to have a united voice that says, guys, it's a little bit too much. $84,000 $84,000 worth of regulations is right. not making home ownership safer or more accessible for people who need it. My God, we've got 19 million people coming on stream over the next 15 years, mm-hmm. new households coming on, and those households are going to have a heck of a difficult time trying to buy a home given the cost and the, in- the unavailability of that. Right. In addition to that, we've got lots of regulations on capital and reserves and leverage that have been imposed on builders based on the problems that we had before 2007. Those risks are in the rear view mirror. And so the regulations that are in place now don't have anything to do with the front windshield. And they're not realistic. So lots of folks, community banks that could have been able to build are unable to do those loans because of the current regulations, which is another reason we lack a lot of inventory. Right. So, um, so you're talking about regulation on the builders. It's not only on, on the builders, but everybody concerned. It, you know, builders as well as as uh, the community bank. Community yes. banks can't can't do those loans because they're they're being their their regulatory environment is really tough on them to lend to what they normally used to do in the past. I think that's that was, prevalent across the board in mortgages. I think that the consumer protection CFPB basically. Right. I mean, it was designed to protect consumers, but it's yeah. now gone in the opposite direction that they're actually making it impossible for good customers to be able to buy real estate. And expensive. Yeah. Very expensive. And, you know, there's a lot of property out there as well, uh, Bob, and, and it's particularly Stacy's real estate side. 
there's lots of property out there that's available that comes in as uh, you know, properties have been foreclosed upon, trying to bring it back into the market. Mm-hmm. And they have these first look and see uh, programs for, for families. There's like 30 days. Those things uh, are basically shelved. By the time the family gets a chance to look at it, there's just a few days remaining on those. Right. And they're usually bought up by investors. So those look and see, first look and see programs need to be extended at least 120 days, 180. Right. So that families do have a shot at being able to buy it and finance it because um, lots of the cash buyers are crowding out folks. We, we saw that historically. Many of the families that could have been replaced into those properties have not been able to because they were crowded out by people who had cash in hand. Right. North American buyer without financing. Hmm. And they are a, they have been placed at a disadvantage by the regulatory environment and the policies that are in place right now. Hmm. We've got to stop that. So you say that the AHA has several key issues. Tell us about the three major issues in order to help build awareness for the concerns. Or, or was the regulatory, um, basically the regulatory I, I stuff... Guess. Part of that. I've got like seven of them, but I'll, I'll start off one. Number one is the high housing inventory crisis that Bob mentioned. That's a number one. There's mm-hmm. just not enough out there. And as a result of that, pr- house prices are being driven up because there's a lot of folks that want to buy and there's not enough to sell. So there's right. a disequilibrium. There's less supply, more demand, and prices are being driven up. That's not good. We've got to stop that. The second thing is the access to credit. The alternative credit scoring models that are available today, in other words, there are are different models that have come out, but we're using old models to qualify people. Those don't open the window for folks that are credit worthy, but don't qualify because those old models are not picking up your rental payments, your utility payments, which show that you pay well. You just choose not to use credit. And, and ethnically, many, there's many groups that don't do that. They'd right. rather pay their bills on time, but it's not reflected in their credit score. So they're being crowded out. They're mm-hmm. being taken out. They, can't even, they don't even appear on the map. Mm-hmm. So we've got to change that as well. And we've got to see a reduction in the fees that are being charged by, the, by Fannie and Freddie. Uh, you know, FHA reduced its fees twice in the past few years, and their loans don't perform as well as Fannie's and Freddie's. Fannie's and Freddie have much better portfolios today. They've, they've taken on less risk. They've, they've upped the credit score of the people that they lend to. They have more down payments than they had before. It's a safer environment in which they work, and yet they don't even lower their fees. In fact, they've heightened them. So those are three key things that are affecting people that could get people back into home ownership: more homes, uh, better access to the credit, and a, and a reduction in the cost because you basically take people out when it's more expensive. Now, you've been in real estate since 1975, and you watched yeah. the 2007 to 2008 housing crisis unfold. Why do you think 10 years later we're still struggling to recover from that? What has to happen? Lots of the regulations that were put in place were put there after the horse got out of the barn. Mm-hmm. And so much of the regulation is, is a look back. It's a rearview mirror kind of thing as opposed to the reality of going forward. We had credit going crazy. There are loans being put on the books that should not have been because uh, people were being lent money because they were just breathing, right, and they had a paycheck. Mm -hmm. All those things have been, uh, in a sense, corrected. But much of the regulatory environment, which is not only about credit to people who are building, but credit to people who want to buy, has become so much stricter. So there's not enough property out there, and therefore we don't have the activity that could have happened in a normal market. And second, there hasn't been credit available to credit-worthy people because it's so strict. So you see a tough recovery because there's not enough product, not enough buyers being put on. Despite the fact that we could have many more buyers, there are so many latent buyers that have solid money, and they're competing for property. So it really is, uh, how should I say, it's very upsetting to see this taking place. It shouldn't take place in America. And... From your point of view, we only have a couple of minutes left. I know, mm-hmm. I know my opinion on this, but why do you think home ownership in our communities is just so important? It's the bedrock of America, from its very inception in 1776 to right now. Back then, it was sustenance for the family. Today, 
Just ask any mayor. Mm -hmm. What's the safest part of the city? Mm -hmm. Where is the greatest prosperity? Where do you find the greatest uh, health? Where is the the greatest level of choices? And all kinds of socioeconomic measures. And every time the mayor will answer it, he'll point to the area that has a big concentration of homeowners. Because homeowners have the behaviors. These are people that want to take care of their family. And anybody can live under a bridge, live with their parents, you know. They can rent. It's easy to rent. But home buying takes a skill set that is superior to those things. And those folks, now that they've got the skills, will go out to protect their families, make life better for them, build a better life for their for themselves. And as a result of that, their communities prosper. That's why home ownership is so important. If we want to keep the prosperity and the growth that we've had in America historically, we need to make sure home ownership remains as a bedrock for that. Wow. Tino Diaz. Managing Director of America's Homeowner Alliance. Tell us, do you know where people can learn more about this and take advantage of the program you gave us today? Okay, so you go to myaha.com or myaha.com. Go to myaha.com. And when you go there and join, you can join for free using the code AHA2017. Again, that is AHA2017 for your listeners. They'll get 12 months of membership for free, and if they like it, please join up $20 a year after that and join with the millions of other voices to make sure that we protect and promote home ownership for all segments of America henceforth. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Tino, for joining us today. Thanks, Tino. A real pleasure. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Get Real. Join us again next weekend for more.